we're starting a new series, but before we do that, what I would really, really like to do is honor some people who spent literally the night uh, getting our sound system up. Uh, Mark Kish is up in our tech booth along with Jim McGregor. They were here till 3.30, 3.30 in the morning, this morning, getting us a sound system. And doesn't that sound great? Praise God. Thank you. So we're starting this new uh, series called The Walk, and it's really dealing with what I would call the five essential practices of a vibrant life in Christ. And it's based on Adam Hamilton's book, The Walk, and you heard we're going to have a class on Wednesdays. If you're interested to be a part of that or maybe the dinner beforehand and go to your regular class, either one, there's a sign up when you leave today to, to do that. But we're, today we're going to talk about worship. That's the very first of those essential practices. In her book uh, called Reaching Out, out without dumbing down, Marva Dawn says there are three goals of worship. Praising God, building up the community, and nurturing the, com- the believer. So it goes without saying that this is a great beginning place for our understanding of this essential practice. Nehemiah 9, 5, so we hear this command. Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. As in the beginning of our walk, we start just as we started with the beginning of our life in Christ, which is worship. Let's pray. Almighty God, all vulnerable God, we come to celebrate with you and to understand your way each and every week. We come to worship you. And yet sometimes there are things in the way that keep us from that place. Whether it be our guilt or our past or or maybe our busy week or whatever it is. Lord, we would ask that today you would help us to begin this walk with you by this essential practice of giving you the glory. Of giving you praise for what you've created in this world and in us. So help us hear your wisdom. Help us to follow your way. Help us along this walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Adam Hamilton uh, talks about worship, and he talks about worship being uh, three different words that are used in the Greek in the New Testament that describe what uh, worship is. And it gives us a little more definition than us just throwing the word out there as worship. And it's, it's quite interesting. By the way, I happen to know that um, Adam Hamilton has at least two people that does research for him, so I'm happy to steal his stuff and not feel bad about it. I always give credit to where I get my information, but his work is always detailed and it is always profound. So I'm happy to share some of his thoughts. The very first word that comes up is proskune. Proskuneo means to bow or kneel or to prostrate oneself. In other words, to lay down before God is what prostrate means. And, and so that very first word, is the is the action of bowing down. But it's interesting because this word is also the same word that describes uh, loving or worshiping someone to the point of, of uh, like a dog licking a master's hand. Have you ever seen a dog excited when the master gets home or their owner gets home? Master seems like a strong word. Uh, uh, the, when, when the owner gets home, they just go nuts, right? They go, oh! Look at her back. I didn't think you were coming back. Oh, yay, praise. That's the same kind of word this proskaneo is for worship. That's the kind of worship it's supposed to be. It's something exciting like that. Uh, anybody have a dog like that? Or a cat or any? A cat will be kind of like, yeah, I love you. <laughs> but, uh, but dogs, man, they, they know, put it all out there. And, and so that, you know what that feels like then to receive that kind of excitement and, or that kind of actually worship from your puppy. That's a pretty cool thing. 
things. So that's one aspect of worshiping. And then the second word is sabomehi. I can't say these Greek words very well. Sabomehi, which means deep reverence. It means that that fall back and bow kind of, oh my word, what a great God we have. Have you ever had that moment where you just went, great is our Lord. A lot of times we feel that when the praise music's here and we just feel the spirit in this place and we go, praise you God. That's that kind of uh, thing. It's also, I believe, that same kind of feeling that the cathedrals that we see all over Europe were built for. Cathedrals were built with these momentous high ceilings so we could feel the immensity of who God is. It's that kind of worship that we step into. A cathedral-like worship that we see not only the cathedral, but then we go outside and we see the world and we see this is an immense, amazing God. God, praise you God. Does that make sense? Can you tell I'm an expressive because my hands are flying all over the place? Yeah, that's who I am. And then the third word is latreno, which is to render service to the master. Worshiping as service is what we call it. We, a couple of years ago, we had our very first service as worship. We didn't come in here. We came in here and prayed together, and then we went out on the streets and served the community. That was worship in the same way. This same word, latrino, is also the word that liturgy or liturgist comes from. So whenever we enter into liturgy, when we say a prayer together or we say uh, the, uh, if we do communion and then read the liturgy, then we are worshiping in word and way along the way. And we're serving in a God with that kind of word. Now, at the same time, Adam Hamilton says there's two dimensions of worship that are found in Psalms. The Psalms are songs of worship. That's really what the book of Psalms is all about. I have to get this phone out of my pocket. I'm just so afraid it's going to ring. Sorry. For those of you who don't know me well, I'm ADD and all sorts of things happen. So there are two different, uh, within those songs, that book of songs that we call the Psalms, there's two different types of worship listed in there. There is the I Psalms and the We Psalms. The I Psalms are like the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down, right? That's that's an I Psalm. And then the other one is more like what our passage from today was, Psalm 100. It starts out and says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth, right? All of us together. Let's do it together corporately. So it kind of defines what worship is like in a couple different aspects. It it defines what personal worship is like. Our personal prayer is our worship. When we pray that psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, we're praying and, and that becomes our personal worship. It isn't selfish. It is a response of thankfulness that we would just go out and and say praise you God and, and and we can do that on our own and be in worship the interesting thing is humans we're the only ones who can choose not to worship Hamilton loves to describe his best example of that is pointing out uh, birds. He said, birds wake up in the morning and they're so happy they start singing. They can't help it. They just sing. That's what I do. That's what I, who I am. In fact, he says, all of creation does that except us. We have a choice not to worship. We have a choice to be something different. Uh, but and, and critical to foundational to our walk is that we decide to worship. That we decide to make that effort to give glory to God, to display glory in our lives. We decide to give glory. And here's the thing. Our faith begins in worship. That moment when we pray to God and say something along the lines of, yes, I want to walk with you. I want to follow you. Like I did when I was about eight years old. I was in a movie theater watching a Christian movie. And at the end of that, I went up front and said, I want to walk with Jesus. I prayed to Jesus and said, I want to walk with you. I want to follow you. I want forgiven of my sins and ready to start a new walk. That was the beginning of my worship back at eight years old. Now, I know I did other things that were a part of it, but when it really hit home for me is when I prayed to God personally 
And that began my personal worship through my prayers. And I believe that's true for all of us. Our faith begins in that kind of worship. That personal worship can take place anywhere. It happens for me mostly, to be honest with you, on my bike. I get up in the morning and I ride my bike, except for it was too cold this morning. So this afternoon I'll be praying uh, my morning prayers because it was too cold. But normally when I get out there and it is, I'm excited to talk to God. I told you about making our first fruits of prayer or first thing in the morning. Make that be, that's what I like to do. And, and then I just, I talk to God. And then a beautiful day, you keep, if you ever see my posts on there when I'm bike riding, sometimes I'll put the sun out there in the sky. And that's that, that worship that's like, oh my gosh, what a wonderful God you are. Those kind of things are personal worship. That's where we make a difference in our lives. Those are the kind of things that, that make us move towards our God. I can't help but pray like that. I love it. I am excited to communicate what I'm feeling to my creator. Now, Psalm 96, 95, 60 says, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. This is a a call to worship, if you will, or a call for communal worship. That's what a call to worship is. Let's all get together and realize that we're one body worshiping God. And that's what Psalm 95, 60 says. It's a call to communal worship. Our passage from today is how Psalm 100 is what worship is. Listen to verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. It says, come with excitement, doesn't it? Isn't that what those first two verses say? Anybody out there? Hello? Doesn't it? Say yes. All right. I want you to get excited. There you are. So um, we have, when I remember this time when I was uh, quite young and when the Beatles first played on Ed Sullivan. I know some of you don't even know what I'm saying right now. The Beatles were a band. You would have loved them. Ed Sullivan was a variety show that don't exist anymore. Okay, got you all caught up. Well, the reason I remember that is because my sister was out dancing in the kitchen while they were singing and she just was going nuts all over the place celebrating the Beatles because they were the hottest thing in the world. Let me translate for some of you. This is BTS. Does that make sense? BTS. That's that's who this is. Uh, BTS was on the Today Show this week, and the people were up there, and they're just dancing up and down. Ah, ah. That's that's kind of that excitement that we feel in communal worship. There there are people that are so excited about it, and the, that we jump up and down and we squeal at the very notion. Okay, how many of you? when you were waiting to come in here we're just like oh, yeah get, 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 come on let's go but truthfully truthfully that's what God wants that's what God wants of us Andrew and I got to go to a, a soccer game last night. It was Orlando City's home opener, and we got to be in the uh, supporter section, which I've never been before. Uh, we didn't even get a seat. You have to stand straight up and because it's general admission, but you get to be in purple and get shot with purple and do all sorts of things. But the exciting part about soccer, and they chanted, and they were celebrating, and they were worshiping their team, I have to admit, all day long. But what the exciting part about soccer that I learned many years ago, I got the opportunity to go to a World Cup when it was in Orlando, and I knew nothing about soccer. Little did I know my life would be immersed in soccer later on, or I'd have learned a few things that day. But I was there for a World Cup game, and the game was amazing. And at the end of the game, you know, they blew the whistle three times and it was over. Well, I got out of my seat ready to leave. And I was like the only one in the whole place that was standing up ready to go. Everybody else, they had instruments back then. They brought whole bands and they're like, oh, 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 you know, playing away and saying, here we are praising. That's what our worship can be like. Not only do we celebrate with excitement during our time here together, but it should go out the door with us. 
I'm going to, I made fun of the Greenwoods, so I'm going to pick someone different this time. I'm going to pick the Tylers. Uh, Kevin's sitting back there by himself. Kevin and Cindy came to our church, and when they found their church home, they found a church home. They got all excited about it, and, they, and they're really thrilled, and they, they can't wait to come to church. That's the kind of thing I think God wants of us. Sorry, Kevin, sorry if I talk about you. I have to ask my kids, but okay, thanks. Cindy's not feeling well. They're passing the flu back and forth. So she'd really rather be celebrating. I know that. But that kind of enthusiasm for, you know, we kind of been coming here. I've been here 12 years and I come through the door and I think, okay, we start with the first service. We start for the second. No, they teach us and they impact us by making a difference. And that's the way the Greenwoods are too. I know they're here again, but that's, that's just the kind of thing. Jerry Weeks, in her eyes alone, is like a dog wagging its tail. Amen? That's, that's who we are. That's, that's what God calls us. That's the kind of thing that we need to learn to wag our tails. Amen? <laughs> Wag our tails to the glory of God. That's what it's all about. Not only that, but to do it here and there for the glory of God. It's one thing to do it here. It's like being in the supporter section. We all do it together. And if you don't, gosh, this guy came up to me because I wasn't singing oopa, ooh, la, 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 whatever. I didn't know the words. And I'm in the supporter section. He goes, come on, you got to sing. And I said, I got to preach in the morning. He said, if you sing, we'll win. And then you can praise God in the morning. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that, so that's the kind of praise that we want in our lives is that kind of thing that continues on out the door. I think we do that a little because we love each other in community here together but what would it look like to worship beyond the benediction with gladness Hebrews 11 13 15 says through him then let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of the lips that confess his names what if we didn't go back to our routines our routines so quickly or what if we didn't go back to our problems right away now, I want to tell you the halters aren't here and we're really sad about that but the halters take every take whoever they met that day to lunch they all go to lunch that day halters lunch I'll call it is worship amen that's the kind of thing we want to do is to live and breathe in worship of God that's where God calls us to be. Now we go back to uh, Psalm 100 in the third verse. It says, know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us. We are God's and we are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. This is that reverent realization of what God has done. This is that second word of, of worship. Realizing that God has made us. Psalm 139.14 gives us appreciation for what God has done both individually and corporately. It says, worship God with an awe and wonder, basically. Listen to the words. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Have you ever thought about how you're made? Have you ever thought about how the body works and what that's all doing? That's phenomenal. That's worshiping God when we realize what God has done. Amen? Amen. That's what God is calling us to. So worship with excitement when we get here. Reverence when we walk through the door and say, Oh my gosh, look at these beautiful people I get to spend the next hour with. Is that what you think? No, not very often. But maybe we should, right? <laughs> That's what we should do. Or maybe it's going out of the door and, and helping someone today and serving God with, with joyful worship along the way. That's where God calls us to. And, and we are called to be celebrating. Verse Verse 4 says, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. Sorry, you didn't have the clue up there. Enter his gates with? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Come on. Enter his gates with? Thanksgiving. Amen. That's where he calls us in his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The doors are open the moment we open our eyes. Not the moment the doors back here open, but that's, that's part of it. That's part of when we come through these doors. And why do we worship? Verse 5 says it beautifully. For the Lord is good. 
His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. That's the God I worship. Amen? And that's what we're called to worship. So worship with excitement when we get here. Come through the door excited, reverent, reverent for what's going on. Serve the Lord. And John 4, 23 and 24 said, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in truth and spirit, in spirit and in truth. We may look like an audience, but we are actually the performance. It doesn't this look, it looks like just like an audience, like you're in a theater or, or a play or something. It looks like you're up here to watch me. Wrong. God is here to watch us praise God. Adam Hamilton says it this way. Our praise is not merely in words, but from the heart and with every part of our being. We are meant to be a living hallelujah in seeking to give thanks, to praise God, not only with our words, but also with our lives. Rendering our worship to God, we find communion with God and the grace, strength, and love to live as his people. That's what it means. That's what we do. God is the audience of our praise. Amen? It's not entertainment for the masses. It's praise to God. The band is great. Weren't they wonderful this morning? They were powerful. But that's praise to God. That's what you're clapping for is praise to God. Let me close with final words from Adam Hamilton. We were created to display God's glory. Our lives are only properly oriented when we are seeking to give glory to God. Honoring, revering, and recognizing God as the source of our lives. Our praise is not merely in words, but from the heart. So, so so we find communion with God and we find grace and strength and love to live as his people. That's what the walk with God begins with. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.